All right, Shabbat Shalom. All right, everybody take their seats. We'll get to start with a moment. All right, the parsha this week, which covers the last chapters in the book of Bamidbar, or Numbers, contains an interesting culmination of events and instructions as we transition to the final book of the Torah. The readings begin with instructions on vows and their validation as it pertains to a husband and wife, and also to a daughter and to her father. A war with Midian takes place with 12,000 soldiers of the children of Israel defeat Midian and kills its five kings along with Baalam, the son of Peor. As the children of Israel move on from battle and the tribes, Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh desire to settle in the land that is east of the promised land and outside the portions given by God, Moses rebukes them for stirring up a rebellious act that was likened to their fathers in the wilderness, but they quickly confirm to Moses that they will fight side by side with their other tribes until all the children of Israel have attained their inheritance. The readings move on onto a review and summary of the travels through of the children of Israel from the point they left Egypt to their current encampment and reviews the borders of the promised land given to them by God to each tribe according to their size. The book of Numbers ends with a review of the daughters of Zilophad and the arrangement of their inheritance as it pertains to the marrying other tribes. And these are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. The Haftor this week begins with the calling of Jer Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah the priest, who was sanctified by God as he says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And was told that the people have been rebellious and have turned to serve Baal, Baalim. But then the Lord gives them hope, and even though they have backslidden from God, he says, If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me, and if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, and then thou shalt not, then thou shalt not remove, and thou shalt swear the, as the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. The final, re final reading for this week is taken from Acts chapter 7 and records for us an amazing testimony of Stephen, who was arrested for speaking boldly about Yeshua and is reminded and is reminding the council bringing accusations, excuse me, and is reminding the council bringing accusations against him of the history of the promise that was given to their forefathers. And like the reading today in Jeremiah, it tells them how rebellious they have been against God, always resisting the Holy Spirit. As the council is cut to their heart by Stephen's words, um, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said unto them, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Amen. Tehillim this week is uh, from uh, Psalms 111 and says, Praise the Lord, and I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the, in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in, in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has de declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are, are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Shofarim. Most holy, majestic Abba Father. We come before you, Lord, 
humbly, Lord, bowing at your feet, asking for your forgiveness for our myriad of sins. Lord, we can't thank you enough for how much you love us and that when we come, when you call, you will show us how much you love us. Lord, we come here today to this place and to this time to worship you, to learn of you, to become one with you. Lord, you have given us everything. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray that as your words come forth from the rabbi's lips today, Lord, that the hearts of the people would be open, that our ears would hear, and that we would feel your touch, Abba Father. Lord, you created each one of us, your plan and your path, they're perfect. Lord, we may not understand, and most of the time we don't, but the times, they are yours. And Lord, you're showing us day by day that you are with us and that we are to trust you and to follow you and to believe on your holy name. Lord, we thank you for the salvation that you've brought to us through your son, Yeshua. And by his blood, we are healed. Lord, we can't praise you and thank you enough, but Lord, we pray that our praise and worship today would be a sweet smelling savor to you as it comes up to your throne today. And that you would show us more and more of yourself as we seek you more each and every moment. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Oh man, let us stand together. For how lovely the tents of Jacob and the dwelling places of Israel. My Tovi. shall draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen. You may be seated. Shabbat Shalom. We begin the Siddur with the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorak. 
Baruch Adonai Hamvarak Leolam Va'en. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Vashamru Vene Israel. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. The blessing of the Mashiach together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu ederek hayeshua b'mashiach yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Please stand for Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malki Hear, O Yisrael, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. The Ve'ahavta, Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, v'chol levavka v'chol nafshecha v'chumodecha, v'hayu v'havrim ha'elein, asher nukumitzafka hayom alavavecha, v'shinan tam levanaka v'yibarta bam v'ashivta kebevetecha, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house. When you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Ha'amida, blessed are you, Lord our God and God of our fathers. God of Abraham, Yitzchak, and God, Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God who bestows grace and greets all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. You are eternally mighty, my Lord. The resurrected of the dead are you, abundantly able to save who sustains the limb with kindness, resurrects the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds? And who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? Amen. Eloheinu ve'ohei avuteinu. Our God and God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us in your commandments 
and grant us our portion, your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness, make us rejoice in your salvation, and purify, purify our hearts to serve you in truth, in love and in favor, O Lord our God. Grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage, and may Yisrael sanctifies your name, rest therein. Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh Shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, who makes the Shabbat holy. Kadish, magnified and sanctified, be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and all say, let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he, though he be high above all blessings and songs, praises and consolations, which are uttered in the world, and all say, Amen. May he make peace in his high places, make peace upon us and upon all Yisrael, and say, Amen. Yit gudav, yit gudash merobam. Bamandira Kyoti, Vilmik Melkata Bakai Konov Yome Konov Kai, the Colt Bisrael, Ba Glau Uizman Karivimru, Amen. Ye Shmedaraba, Mevrak Lolom, O Me, O Maya, Yit Barak, Vishabak, Vitsupra Artrumam, Vietna Savior to Darby to Lave to Lao, Shmedakur Shabahu, La Elam and Koprakata, Vishrata, Tushbakata, Venaki Mata Dangram, Bama Vimru, Amen. Oh, say shalom in Ruma. Huya say shalom aleinu. Veacho Yisrael. Vimru. Himru. Amen. Oh, say shalom bimru. Who we are, say shalom aleinu, veacho Yisrael, vimru, imru, amen. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom. Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu V'yacho Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu V'yacho Yisrael May he who makes peace in high places make peace for Israel and for all mankind and say Amen Alright, my two drummer boys here and myself, this is all you got today. We need your help to help sing and worship today. Uh, I'm less than 100%, but we're here. And we're excited to be in the temple of God. Amen. Day of rest, Shabbat. Let's celebrate. I 
everything I am is for you. Everything I am is for your glory. Everything I am is for you, Lord. There is a time to sow. There is a time to reap. A time for victory. Yes. A time to claim defeat. A time to be renewed. Your time to be reborn and in all seasons God we humbly seek your face this is our offering to you this is our offering this is our offering to you everything I am is for your glory everything I am is for you everything I am stand still without you. We could only move because you made us to. The world is nothing without, without you. We could only love because you made us to. Everything I am is for your glory. Everything I am is for you, Lord. Can you feel the rhythm of heaven? Oh, it's bringing freedom and Can you feel compassion? 
ocean flowing, it's taking all our fears away. Hallelujah. Holy 
fire, come burn away our desire. Father, we thank you for this place, Lord. We thank you for this presence that you have filled this room with, Father God. Your presence may not always come with a feeling, Father God. It comes with a knowledge and an understanding and a, a faith to believe in your promises. You said, you spoke, and two of us are gathered for you. In your name, Lord, you are in the midst. Father God, we claim that. We believe that over us in this place. That you are here. If you're here, Father God, your presence is here. If your presence is here, Father God, your Ruach is here. Lord, send your Ruach, Father God, to cleanse us. Put your coal upon our lips. 
cover us with your blood. Father God, we come, Lord, seeking your face. We come seeking you, Father God. Hungry, Lord, thirsty for more of you. Lord, we don't come here, Father God, out of obligation. We don't come here out of habit and routine, Lord. Father, I pray that we choose to come here because we know we'll meet you here. It's here we will find you. It's here you will speak to us. Help us come to you, Father God, with empty pitchers today, Father God. As we pour out our worship, as we pour out our love to you, Father God, at your feet. Lord, we seek you, Father God. We seek what you have for us. We seek the bread from your table, the truth from your word. Lord, wipe away and wash away, Father God. Burn away all the stuff of this world that we may carry in here. Our wrong decisions, our mistakes, Father God, our worries, or our fears, the anxieties of this life, Father God, we lay those down for you. The peace that passes all understanding, we lay it down for you. Lord, we lift up holy hands now, Father God, and we reach out to you, Father God. We ask that you would fill us. You would fill us with you, Father God. Not the stuff of this world. Not the loves that are empty, Father God. Not the desires that are fake, Lord. The true love, the true fulfillment, the true joy that we can find only in you, Father God. We reach out, we lift up holy hands, and we ask for you to come. We ask for you to feed us. We ask for you to give us drink, Lord. We praise your name in this place, the name of Yeshua, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. There is none other. May you be glorified. May you be praised. May you be lifted high today by us. As we humble ourselves, Lord, as we come to you, and we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. When the ark would travel, Moshe would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For out of the Yom shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Yerushalayim. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Yisrael. Yamod Yehuda ben Eliyahu la Torah. Baruch Hu Adonai Hambarach, Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Vayed. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher b'cha benu mikol, ha'amin v'natananu et torato, baruch atah Adonai notein ha'torah. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Yaladim. This is a time in which we invite Hayel Adin up front and we play, pray a weekly blessing over them. But first we say, Boker Tov, Yel Adin. Let us pray. Thank you, O Lord, for these blessed children and the families that they represent. May they be blessed abundantly as Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, Ephraim, and Manasseh. That a hedge of protection be around each and every one of them, O Lord. 
keeping them from harm's way, keeping them healthy, O Lord, from sickness. Build their immune systems, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Lord, I also ask that you be with them, Lord, as they grow physically, that spiritually they will be drawn near to you. They will come to the understanding, Lord, that you are the Mashiach ben Yosef and the Mashiach ben David. They will receive you as both and look forward to your return. And that they would receive life everlasting as a result of their commitment to you. Lord, I ask that you surround them with godly men and women who will assist them on their life's journey, teaching them your ways, O oh Lord, not the ways of the world. We ask you all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Vadibel Moshe el Rashe Hamatot Libne Yisrael, Lemor Ze Hadavar, Asher Tziva Adonai, Ish Ki Yidar Neder Ladonai O, Kishava Shavua, Lasor Isar Al Nafsho, Lo Yachel Davaro Kacho Hayotse, Mi Pi Yase, Vaisha Ki. Tidor neder ladonai vasra isar bavet aviha binurea. Praise you, Lord, Yeshua Mashiach. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord had commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth. Amen. And this is the last Torah portion of Amin Bar of Numbers. So as tradition, I think we have a slide, right? So as we say together to commemorate the completing of Bamid Bar and then clearly next week, be going to Devarim, we say, Chazak, Chazak, Vanit Chazak, be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. Amen. Amen. Reading Baruch Atadonai, Luhinu Melaka Walam, Asher Natan Lanu, Turati Met, Vachai Walam, Natabat Kinu Baruch Atadonai, Notain, Hatorah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Vezot HaTorah Sher Sam Moshe, Lifnei B'nei Yisrael, Al Pi Adonai B'ad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Torah scroll is the Word of God, Yeshua is this Word. John the Immerser said in John 1.29, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God's word is written on lambskin. Yeshua is this lamb. In John 12, 32, Yeshua said, And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. The two wooden poles holding this Torah scroll are called Eitz Chaim, or Tree of Life. Yeshua was sacrificed on two wooden poles some 2,000 years ago for our sins. Eitz Chaim Hi Lemachazakim Ba Vetom Kea Meushar Dake to Keno Am Vekol Nateva Tesh Shalom Hashavenu Adonai Lekav and Meshuba Kadesh Yamanu Kakadem. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and happier are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Cause us to return to you, Adonai, we shall return, renew our days as of old. Revelation 2 7 reads, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the, to the congregations. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yeshua was, is, and shall ever be this word of the one living God that we look upon this day for our salvation. Amen. You may be seated.
How many are ready to study the word this morning? Okay. Um, we had a um, before I start. I want to <clears throat> share with you. We had a we had a visitor to our house on Wednesday. Um, wasn't initially certain who that was until he identified himself and I was still at work and just getting home and uh, Ribbsine Yvonne and Tasha were over at the house and, and they weren't certain who this person was. Turns out it, it, it was um, Jason, the Jason that was on the vent that many of you all prayed for. How many remember Jason? You know, he was on the vent during COVID. Charmaine's husband. Yes, he was. He was. Uh, he had lost 50 pounds. Didn't recognize him. Um, he came over, and um, he had, not only had he go go through the time in which he had to re to recover from being on the vent with COVID. He then had because he was on the vent for so long, he had to go to Edwin Shaw for rehab, and, and while he was at Edwin Shaw at rehab, he ended up turning out and having blood clots completely in his lungs and uh, in his legs. And uh, uh, he was very, very ill. But many here uh, prayed for him. He was on the prayer chain. Many uh, others from other places that, that knew Charmaine and, and Jason were praying for him. But praise God, he's had a complete recovery. He had a 50% chance of surviving off of the vent and a 15% chance of surviving from the blood clots that filled his lungs. So when you add those two percentages together, it's only God who could have saved him. Now, he was to be here this morning, and he was going to give his testimony. I'm not going to share with you the, the portion of the testimony uh, of what happened to him, why all this was going on. But he was in the spirit when this was all going on. And you all are going to be encouraged by hearing his testimony uh, when he comes. He was supposed to be here this morning, but it looks like he couldn't make it. So uh, he may come, and if he does, we're going to have him share his testimony afterwards. But it is literally unbelievable what God did for him, sending ministering angels and the things that he experienced. So. I want you to know that when he does come, he's going to give the testimony. I want it to be encouragement to all the intercessors and all the prayer warriors and all those that, that pray. Because God, God does answer prayer. And some of the things that I heard from the prayers that were going up for the throne of God about this young man, he actually witnessed it were actually occurring to him when he was being going through this terrible time. But this healing was for God's glory. And it's completely changed him. So when he comes, we're going to have that testimony. And I may repeat some of the intro again. But it, once again, he doesn't look like he was going to be here today. So, uh, But you need to know that he's completely recovered. And he's on fire for God. So uh, we just need to hear his testimony to encourage us to, to stir. You know the pool of Bethesda? How many know that? Healing pool, right? It was believed that angels stirred that pool, and then if you've gone to Israel and you've been there, you see what it's like. Many would stand around waiting for that pool to be stirred so that they could jump in and be healed, and yet Yeshua healed somebody outside of that pool. You remember the story in the Brit Kadashah, right? If you didn't, I would encourage you to read it, because in the physical there was healing, but in the spiritual you need to go to the pool of Bethesda in the spiritual to change things too. Especially as times get worse, we have to spend more time in the spirit than we have been spent spending. Everyone, and that's really part of the message for today that you should take away. So, <clears throat> today we have a few verses um, that we're gonna talk about. Today we have a double portion parasha. We're blessed with a double portion parasha, the parashot, matot, which means tribes, and masay, which means journeys. 
This ends our reading as, as we shared at the Torah table. This ends our she readings of the fourth book of the Torah, Bamibar, or Numbers. Turn with me to Bamibar chapter 30, verses 1 through 2, which says the following. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Now, this will be the basis of the teaching today because, and, and some may say, well, what do you get out of a teaching for vows and oaths? I think you're going to be, see this totally differently. Two portions. One is you need to know vows and oaths in order to understand what the scriptures mean. And then those that take vows and oaths, what the implications were for what they did. And then how they apply to us today, because they've sort of lost their meaning over the generations, but there still is an impact that you need to be cautious about. And then finally, resetting your priorities in these end times, something that everyone needs to do, especially as we approach the High Holy Days. Because people, this could be the season that he chooses to return as Mashiach ben David, amen? amen? Now here we read about vows and oaths. With a vow, a person is given the power to invoke a neder. A neder is a vow, thereby placing upon himself or herself, as we read in the Torah this morning, or others, or upon objects of this choice that he or she has made. A status equivalent to that of a commitment of the Torah. That's the significance of vows and oaths. They have the ability to have the equivalent or the status of a commandment of a Torah. Just as God had given that authority to give clarifications this has that ability to, to bind as a result of that action and those bind, that binding is on the one who actually does the vow or does the oath. These are very important things to remember. Now there are vows and oaths in the secular world but they definitely do not have the, the power and authority under God's direction as to what a true vow or oath is. But it's that same concept that's been applied in the, in the courts and in other contexts of what vows and oaths are. The second topic of this passage is an oath. And by means of an oath, one may either prohibit oneself or require oneself to perform an act. A vow is something that's positive, such as offering a sacrifice, whereas an oath is a vow of abstinence. An example of this would be a self-imposed fast. Now these distinctions are confusing to keep straight. The distinction between vows and oaths and are sometimes hazy to see or understand. Is it a vow, is it an oath, is it an oath or a vow? Are they combined, is there parts to it? But it's very confusing. But we have to try to understand how these work so that as we read scripture, we know the significance of that. And we're going to give some examples this morning around that. Today, the distinction doesn't seem to have the same weight anymore. But we need to understand the meanings to understand the instructions in scripture. Now, vows often are often uttered in times of crisis. Vows are off, often just brought forth in times of crisis. It's a time when the spirit and the flesh seem to be in unison, at least at one point in time, where something that's fleshly is happening, um, and then it's sort of a unification of both flesh and spirit calling out uh, to, to uh, help in times of crisis. To heal him, Psalm 66, 13 through 15 says this. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows which my lips have uttered, and my mouth hath spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings, 
with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats, Selah. Now, let's look at some examples of vows. Bereshit, Genesis 28, 20 to 22 says this. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep, will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Now, Bami Bar, Numbers 21, verses 1 through 3, says this. And when King Arad the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Hormah. In Judges chapter 11, verses 30 through 31 and verse 35 says this, And Yephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that troubled me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. So we saw different examples and different levels of vows as we went through these four, four um, books of the Bible about uh, applications of vows and how vows impacted those, some with actions, some with promises, um, some with, with actions that had to be completed because the commitment to the vow had to be fulfilled because it had the same power and influence as if it was a commandment in the Torah. So I did it in a level of progression of vows for you to understand that there are different levels of vows and you just have to read the scriptures to understand where they are. Uh, the last one, though, is caution, because you have to be careful what you ask for. In this case, his daughter was impacted as a result of his action. 1 Samuel 1, 9 through 11 says this. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. So let's continue on with more examples. Jonah 1, 14 through 16 says this. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. So we see here Jonah's prayer, and we see John's, uh, God's answer in, in uh, Jonah 2, verses 9 through 10, which says this. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. All of these are different levels of examples of vows. Now let us turn back to Psalm again, and let's read a little further from where we left off. Turn back to Tehillim 66, 16 through 20. Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not un turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Now let's turn to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9, which says this. 
He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer, shall be an abomination. So even when you, even when you approach this example of vows, if there's, if there's issues before you make the vow, the vow may not even have the power that it needs to have and, and recognized it much like in a can- commandment in the Torah as your relationship with God and the vow or the oath that you make, uh, depending upon uh, what, what your condition is at the time in which you make the vow. So that's important too to understand that, that when vows or oaths are made, um, what is your current condition? Have you asked for forgiveness? Are you, are you, are you um, in a state where you can make this kind of vow? Are you in control of what you're committing to? Do you have the ability to, to uh, uh, impact uh, in other individuals or your own actions or, or impact the, the, um, uh, the object of, of what you're dealing with? Deuteronomy, Davarim 7.12 says this. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. Proverbs 28.13 says this. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So, let's go back and... Uh, which we saw in action in Tehillim 66, 16 through 20, based upon these vows that we've just read and, and, the, and the various types of vows and what, what God's response is to them in various situations, let's go back and reread Tehillim 66, 16 through 20 to have now that we filled in some of the, some of the side scriptures that fit into these verses. Let's read it in, in, once again, which says this. Come and hear, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Now it's interesting, though, that when the crisis passed, and the prayer was answered that there was the temptation for man to forget the vow. So you're under pressure. You make a vow, both physically and spiritually. You come together, you're in complete distress. You reach out to God and, and, and you go with, with, a, with, a, with a heart uh, that, you've, that you've stood before the Lord in the hopes that he would receive your prayers and honor the vow. And then God comes through with it, and he completes it. What you ask for, he gives you, if it's in his will, and he does give it to you. But then sometimes there's an temptation for man to forget the vow because they fall back out of the spirit and the unity of the spirit and the flesh, which is really only one instance that I can really think of when spirit and flesh are sort of in unity because how many know you're constantly in conflict? Spirit and flesh are constantly in conflict. But they seem to gravitate to each other when they're under crisis or distress. We saw that in Jacob when he was confronted with his brother. Remember that? He was doing both things. He was doing the physical, he's doing the spirit, and it was more of a unity type thing. But that's when he's under crisis. When things start to settle out, that spirit and flesh seem to start separating again and conducting themselves in the nature that they actually are. In this case, there's a temptation for man or woman to forget the vow. Let me give you an example. I'm going to give you a movie example that just sort of came to my mind. And I had Ribbison Yvonne confirm it this morning because when I was sharing with her a portion of what I was teaching, the same movie came to her mind. So listen to this, listen to this. There's two actors. I'm going to set the tone real quick, then I'm going to go to the point of the relationship here. Dom DeLuise, how many have heard of him? How many have heard of Burt Reynolds? Okay. They did a few movies together, but this movie was a little interesting. I believe there was a Jewish man who actually wrote it, and it's because of vows and oaths. But listen to this. So, 
They're both Meshuggah. Both of them are a little crazy. <laughs> Bert, they're in an insane asylum, and Bert ha hires Dom DeLuise because Bert doesn't want to kill himself. So he hires Dom DeLuise to do it. So that's sort of the theme of the whole thing. And then the rest of the movie is them going back and forth where Bert's changing his mind, and then he wants to do it, and he doesn't. But Dom DeLuise is focused because he's just Meshuggah, so he's going to try to get him. So now we go to the scene, the scene that really sticks in your mind. And here's the scene. Finally, Bert decides, this is it. I'm going to have to do this myself. So he goes out to California on the beach. I think it's California. He goes on the beach, and he says, I'm going to end my life. He gets in the water, and he begins to swim to the horizon. And he figures, I'll swim as far as I can. I'll get exhausted and then I'll pass out, and then I will have achieved what I wanted to do. How many have seen this movie? Anyone? Okay, a couple. All us gray hairs have probably seen it when we were kids. Okay, except for the, the women who said, who acknowledge that I'm not gonna say that you're gray hair, so, so we're not gonna age you. So, he's out there and he's swimming, and he's swimming in the ocean, and he's going deeper and deeper and deeper, and you can see that he's getting tighter and tighter and finally gets to the point where he can't swim any longer and he begins to sink and he sinks. And they show, the camera shows him sinking, he's going down and now the camera flips to him as if the camera is him and you're, in, you're experiencing what he's experiencing as he sinks. Then it gets quiet, then guess what happens? He changes his mind. He changes his mind. What's he do? He starts fighting for his life. He starts fighting for his life and he starts swimming to the, to the top of the water. And he comes out of the water and he says the famous line, I want to live. Except he said it a little more expressive than I'm saying it. But he screams out that he wants to live. So he gains a little bit of energy that's left and he starts swimming and he sees now, he's not on the horizon, but he starts looking back at the, at the shore and the shore is pretty far away. So what does he do? He calls out to God. God, help me. Help me to get back to the shore. Lord, if you help me get back to the shore, I promise, I vow that I will give everything I own, everything I have, everything I could do, I will give to you. Just please let me live. Let me get back. So he starts swimming. He makes it a little way, and his strength starts coming back. The shore gets closer and closer, and he starts getting closer. Now he's about halfway from the time that he went under to the time that he got back, and he's thanking God for what he's done. Thank you, Lord, for what he's done. Then he gets a little closer. He's probably three quarters of the way back to the shore. Guess what happens? Lord, he starts talking to the Lord. He says, Lord, you know, I may have been a little hasty. You know, I was under a lot of stress. I was drowning. I changed my mind. Lord, I promise. I can't give everything, I have to live on something, so I'll give you half of everything I have. Half of everything I have, I will give to you. Still keep swimming, you know? Now he's about half the distance between three quarters and the shore. And he's swimming and he's swimming, and all of a sudden he gets maybe 10% away from the shore. Talks to God again, he says, Lord, you know, I'm, I was hasty when I said 50%. He said, you know, the Bible says you only give 10%. Lord, I promise I will give you 10% of everything I have. I will give as a gift to you. I promise. If you just let me get to the shore, I only got 10% of the way to get there. If you let me get there, I promise I will give you 10%. So, guess what happens? The waves start taking him in, start bringing him up to the shore. He gets up to the shore and he gets out of the water. He's exhausted, he gets to the shore, but he's saved and he's on dry land. What's he do? He turns to God and he says, Lord, you know I was under a lot of stress. I really didn't mean what I did. I'm not gonna be able to keep my promise. I'm not gonna be able to do that. 
That's not the end of it. Guess what happens? As he's feeling good, getting his breath back together, he's standing on the shore, Dom DeLuise shows up with a gun and starts chasing him to shoot him. <laughs> what does he do? He says, God, I'll give you 100% of everything I own if you just let me get away from this Meshuggah, if you let me get away from this guy. Have you ever been tempted when you made a promise to a person then have the desire to renege on the promise. This is something that happens naturally. How much easier is it when you are dealing with an invisible God to renege on your promise? If you're willing to do it with a physical person, how much easier is it with an invisible God? Well, there are warnings against it. Davarim, Deuteronomy 21 through 23, and Ecclesiastes 5, 4, and 5 say the following. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep, and perform even a free will offering according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with my mouth. When thou vowest to vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. So the rest of the story. When God answers prayer, don't delay your commitments you made for your ask of him. Now let's turn our attention to another issue. Where our personal interests take precedence over the corporate interests and sometimes go against God's will. Bami Bar 32, 1 through 7 says this. Now the children of Reuben and the children of God had a very great multitude of cattle, and when they saw the land of Yazer and the land of Gilead, that, behold, the place was a place for cattle, the children of God and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Atorot and Divon and Yazer and Nimra and Heshvon and Eliele and Shavan and Nebo, and beyond, even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given the, them? So you see here where the leadership had a personal interest in something that was totally different. Moshe responds about this. The problem is here we're seeing separation versus unity. There was something that was on the corporate level that needed unity where... Reuben and Gad had a different personal interest that they wanted to, to uh, do. They wanted to stay back. They didn't want to go to battle. They wanted to stay in the land. They wanted that as their promised land. Numbers 32, 8 through 15 says this. Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Gadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up unto the valley of Eshkol, and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel, and they should, that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. And the Lord's anger was kindled at the same time, and he swears, saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from twenty years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, save Caleb the son of Yephunneh the Kenizzite, and Joshua the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years until all the generation 
that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men, to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. For if ye turn away from after him, he will, uh, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy all this people. It's interesting to see this because they're focused in more on their, their personal needs, uh, more focused in on their cattle, and yet they're not going to live. They're going to die in the wilderness. They're not even going to spare us the promised land. The separation versus the unity of the group. This is the example that's happened as a result of that. Numbers 32, 16 through 23 says this. Let's continue on. And they came near unto him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready armed before the children of Israel until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side, Jordan, or forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side, Jordan, eastward. And Moses said unto them, If ye will do this thing, if ye will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he hath driven out his enemies from before him, and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return, and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. So, we see that they're going to get what they ask for if they go into battle, which, which they do. It is not enough for one to know that one's actions are proper in God's eyes. One must also act in such a way as not to engender suspicions on the part of other people also. Bami Bar 13, 24 through 26 says this. Did I say 32? I'm sorry. Bami Bar 32, 24 through 26 says this. Behold, you see, behold, build you cities for your little ones and folds for your sheep and do that which hath proceeded out of your mouth. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commandeth. Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our cattle shall be there in the cities of Gilead. So isn't this interesting? Moshe changed the priority of Reuben and Gad their priority that they proposed. They were more interested in their cattle than their children, but Moshe changed it and they agreed. He focused in on the children, why? Because those people were not going to make it out of the promised land, only the children were. Their focus was themselves and individuality, separating themselves from the unity of the group and the chance of jeopardizing the children and Moshe changed their focus. Remember what it said in Bami Bar 3216. Remember what they said? Listen to it again. And they came near unto him and said, we will build sheep holds here for our children. Does it say that? What does it say? Cattle and cities for our little ones. They have their priorities mixed up. Their property and things are more important than their lineage. This is in their flesh. They need Torah teachers to teach them the right way on how to live. They were focused more in on the physical aspects and not the lineage or the generational importance of what was there. Their cattle came first, but now under Moshe, the children come first. So what is the lesson here? What is the motivation of your actions? Are they personal? Or are they corporate? Today, believers in Yeshua need to have their priorities straight. God, Yeshua, family, community, careers, work, recreation. Ask yourself, where do you stack up in this group of words that I've read off to you? 
these seven words, these seven categories, where do you stack up? Take time this week. I would challenge you to take time this week to tally it up, to reflect upon those seven categories, and to reset your priorities to be in line with God and Yeshua, to be in priority and uh, set up with family, with community, be set up with careers and work, and be set up with recreation. Bar 3233 says this. And Moses gave unto them, even to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, and unto half the tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land, with the cities thereof in the coast, even the cities of the country round about. So they performed what they vowed to do, they did it, and now they receive their reward on the uh, on state on this side of the Jordan. Here we see that the half-tribe of Manasseh has joined the tribes of Reuben and Gad. Moshe, read, read the, the verses, uh, Bami Bar, chapter 32, verse 33, which says, oh, we did that, sorry. Moshe wanted outstanding authority to dwell with the relatively isolated two tribes. Why? Because they showed their character when they were going to war of desire for separation, their own personal desires, not unity in the community, but also uh, needing some instruction on the Torah because they were going to fail. These isolated tribes that were staying on this side of the Jordan, he felt that he needed to send authority to teach the Torah, to guide them. This set a precedent for Jewish continuity in Torah. Manasseh had a share of the west side of the promised land also because the half tribe of Manasseh was split. Half of it stayed on one side, half of it on the other. Joshua 20, 22 verse 7 says this. Now to the one half of the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given possession in Bashan, but unto the other half thereof gave Joshua among their brethren on this side Jordan westward. And when Joshua sent them away also unto their tents, then he blessed them. Now let's go to the Brit Kharasha, Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So... Why are there teachers? We saw where teachers in the half tribe of Manasseh were left to teach them Torah when they were on the other side of the Jordan. And now we ask ourselves, why are there teachers? People need instruction. People are led by material inclinations, not spiritual ones. Why is that? Well, like the Reuben and Gad example, we read that Moshe changed their priorities. Remember? People live in the flesh more than they do in the spirit. Without spiritual, biblical teachers, people ultimately travel down a hill spiritually, which can lead to their demise spiritually. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14 says this. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So in closing, only a mature spirit can consume and digest strong meat. You need the right nourishment to mature your spirit and to maintain your spiritual strength until Yeshua returns again for us. Amen? It is our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he's made us unlike the nations of the lands and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He's not made our portion like theirs and our lot like their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the king over kings, the holy one, blessed be he. 
He stretches out heaven and establishes his foundation and the seat of his glory is in the heavens above and the presence of his powers in the most exalted heights. He is our God. There is none other. True is our king. There is nothing beside him as it is written in his Torah. And you shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth below. There is none other. Amen. Amen, amen. Let us stand together. found my breathing room no longer rest in you no longer have to fight the burden is lifted the weight is light you are my steady ground no need to worry now. The fog has cleared the way. I stand uncovered. I walk in your grace. My heart is wide open. My heart is wide open. As I breathe in every word that you've spoken, my heart is wide open. My heart is wide open. As I breathe in every word that you've You speak right to my core. Don't have to hide anymore. There's nothing I can do but stand in your presence, completely consume. My heart is wide open. My heart is wide open. As I breathe in every word that you've spoken, my heart is wide open, my heart is wide open. As I breathe in every word that you've spoken, my heart is wide open, my heart is wide open. As I breathe in every word that you've spoken, I'm letting go, I'm letting go. There is breathing room for my soul. I'm letting go, I'm letting go. There is breathing room for my soul. My heart is wide open. My heart is wide open. As I breathe in every word that you spoken, my heart is wide open. My heart is wide open. As I breathe every word that you spoken, my heart is wide open to you. Oh, as I breathe everything you have, oh, Lord, yes, oh, Lord, my heart is wide open, my heart is wide open, as I breathe in every word that he Spoken. 
I breathe in everything that you say. is wide open Oh, I breathe You in My heart is Yours, Lord My heart is Yours, oh Lord I breathe You in I breathe You in My heart is Yours Oh, my heart is Yours Come and do your work. Come do a work in us, Lord. Cause your healing to come. Cause your healing to come. We are yours. Oh, you, we are yours. Oh, we bow to your
from the land of the barren. We will cry out for rain. Fill our hearts, O oh God. We'll keep trusting you. trust in you from the land of the barren oh lord we cry out for your rain fill our hearts oh god we, we trust in who you are from the barren lands in us, we cry for your rain. Come and fill us. Oh, we trust in your name. For we know you are faithful, oh God. Yes, we know you alone, you alone are faithful, Lord. Yes, we know our God is faithful. Yes, we know. Let it be known you are faithful. Let us praise you. Let us praise you. Who you are. 
Lord, I pray that nothing can hold back our praise. That nothing can hold back our praise. Nothing within us, nothing outside of us, nothing around us, Father God, we will let hold back our praise. For you are worthy. You are worthy, Father God. You alone are worthy. Thank you, Father God, what you're doing. We thank you, Father. We give you praise in this place, Lord. We lift up holy hands to you. And we thank you, Father God. We praise you, Father God. good, Lord. Oh, your mercies endure forever. You are good. Oh, Father God, you are good. You're good to us, Lord. We don't deserve who you are. We don't deserve your love. You're so good, Father. Father God, we praise you. I don't know why, but I just encourage you to lift up 
your praises, your thanksgiving, your gratitude to him now, silently, out loud. We need to speak out. We need to profess the greatness of our God. We need to profess his name in this place, in this safe place among us. Praise his name and lift him up. For he is good and his mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. in our spirit, Father God. Seek your goodness, the ways that you've blessed, the ways that you move, Father God. Lord, I ask that you'd open up the heavens, Father. Open up the heavens, Father God, and pour out upon us. Your goodness, your joy, your love, your family, Change what we see this week, Father God. Change what we see. Change what we notice. Change what we bow down to and give attention to. Spark within us a life, Father God, a ruach, a presence. All those around us are affected by our love. And that they're turned to you, Father God. Turn in the hearts of the people to their Father.
Lord, forgive us of our short-sightedness, Father God, our doubt in who you are and what you're doing within us. Lord, we want to enter in the promised land. We don't want to stop short because of fear or anxiety or doubt. Because we're once, we're old, we're older than our passions when we first met you. We may be older, Father God, from our first love. Help us to remember, Lord, and dream and hope in you. Hope is real, Father God. We believe that hope is real. A betterness still exists for your people. When we run to you, Father, this world has nothing, nothing for us. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father God, for your presence. We praise you for your message today, Lord. Be proud of who we are this week. Be proud of how we speak, how we walk, how we act, how we love this week, Lord. ripen our fields change our vision and what we see remind us of our purpose in you our calling upon our lives the season that we're in we as a people lift your name in this place we honor you and you alone we say amen We see for a couple of announcements. Of course, we have the uh, yeshiva and youth group this week, 7.30 to 9, uh, on Wednesday night, so make sure to, uh, to attend that. And then also, uh, this is the last uh, week, I think uh, today and probably next Shabbat, is the last Shabbat to sign up for uh, Rosh Pina calendars, as well as uh, the last week to get Vera the pictures of um, you know, an art project or landscape or whatever it might be, but to get Vera those pictures uh, by next Shabbat, because then she's going to put it together and order the calendar. So make sure you uh, work with her and speak to her um, if you have any questions around that. Uh, but other than that, just reminders of Aka Box and Backs for ties, offerings, donations. Remember this one over here as well, the praise reports and prayer requests. Um, and then as we go into Oneg, let's say the bracha together. If you could hit the slide. Not that we should need it. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lecha min haaretz b'ashem Yeshua Hamashiach. Amen. Shavuot tov.